Hello, this is Craig from pitchbox.co.uk. In this video, I'm going to paint an iridescent effect on a beetle. So this is the large beetle from the Alariel model for Age of Sigma. I undercoated him in a grey primer and then base coated him with a bad and black. Um, you could just um, prime him in black and go straight from there, but I like to just have a bad and black as for base um, for this model. So to begin, I'm going to take Cull. This is from the Badger Minotaur range of paints. And if you're using Citadel colours, um, you could mix some Mechanicus Standard Grey with some Abandoned Black. Um, you essentially just want a really dark grey at this stage. As you want this grey colour to be quite subtle for this to work. So just spray it around the carapace of the model. Just very lightly, you can see just very lightly. And just um, essentially, I'm just doing random areas here, so a lot of the tips of the claws and spikes and talons, etc. But also just randomly in different areas and different corners and such. It's really up to you um, where you put these. It won't make a massive difference to the final look of the model. But just work your way around the model gradually. Just doing these little grey areas. And I'm doing this on the entire carapace of the model. So here it is with the first highlights of grey. As you can see I've gone around the entire model, model carapace. I've also done underneath as well. And it's very hard to get, get it all in shot but I'll do my best throughout the video. So now we can begin to add our first colour. And this is Ghost Tint Blue from Badger Minotaur range. Essentially throughout this video, we are just going to be highlighting this in several la layers and several steps using different ghost tints over the top to achieve our effect. So with this just um, again, don't apply this too heavily, go lightly with several passes just to build up the blue. Now with the grey being very subtle, we'll also get quite a subtle blue as well. As you can see I'm just gradually building that up there and it's just tinting the surface to a really nice blue. Now when it dries it will be even more subtle than this and that will really help sell the effect that we're going for. So um, also in this tutorial I'm going to be doing some areas with purples, um, essentially following the box art slightly for that. So if you want to paint yours in exactly the same way as I do just look at the box art to where the purple areas are and don't paint on them during this step. And you'll see just um just above the head there that is quite it's quite blue, it's gone a bit heavy. I must have gone a bit heavy with the um grey before. If that happens to you, um once it's dry just give it a, a wash or two of non oil and that'll bring that colour down. So I'm just essentially going around the entire model, just leaving the areas that I want to remain for the purple and we'll be going over them in the next step. So here's how he looks after the first blue highlight is complete. So we're going to come in with Ghost Tint Purple and we will be doing the purple areas. Now it doesn't really matter at this stage if you spill onto the areas already painted in blue. That will just help sell the transition a little bit more, but please um, do be careful as much as you can when doing these areas. So I followed the box art, so essentially the underside of these large um, pincers, talons or whatever they are, are all going to be purple. I'm also doing the face and also around the ends of the claws at the front and just a f few random areas on the carapace also. So much like the blue just work your way around you can see me putting some on the pincer there and you can build it up just gradually. Um, I'm only really doing one pass on these as I want the colour to be quite subtle. So 
So again, just work your way around a model and um, wherever you want the purple areas to be. So with the purple complete, we now have the blue and the dark blue and the purple areas done on the model. So you can see it's just quite subtle and where it catches the light, you can really see it. So that's the sort of effect we're looking for. So, so far, so good. So the next thing to do, as we're using ghost tints, um, we want to put on some varnish. So I'm using a flat coat, you can literally use um, gloss varnish, satin varnish, um, art coat, whatever you want to use at this stage really. Um, I prefer flat because these ghost tints are quite shiny anyway, so I always want to take that down a little bit. And we're just essentially just going to spray this over the entire model. Now, the reason we do this is because when you use ghost tints, um, if you put another colour on top of them, that will sort of bleed through um, from the ghost tint, and we don't want that. So now that the varnish is dry, we can begin with the next step. As you can see, um, we still have this nice subtle effect, and it's still quite um, shiny, even though I've put a flat coat on. So next we're going to come back in with the um, coal and we're essentially going to do a similar thing as before. Now these areas are going to be green and I'm also going to have magenta areas on the purple. So I'm really just putting these in random places. Um, for the magenta I'm just going to focus on some of the sharper details and um, tips of the talons and stuff like that. Um, exactly the same process as before, just coming in very subtly. Just very lightly on the trigger with the grey, just so you don't go too heavy with it. So with this grey, you just want a light dusting, um, same as before. You don't want a solid finish, really. You can go over the areas you've already done, and um, with the other ghost tint colours. So just work your way around the entire model just as you did in step one. So here he is with the extra grey highlights, as you can see they're very subtle just as before. So now we're coming in with ghost tint green. Now this will be a very drastic looking um, layer, but don't worry we'll be coming back in with another blue later. So again just avoid all the areas that you wish to have purple as we'll be highlighting them in the next step. But on all these blue areas where we have the highlights I'm going in with the green and as you can see it's it's quite overpowering to begin with but that will um, dull down as it dries and that will give us a nice sort of blue green effect. As long as you haven't gone totally over all your blue areas that you painted in the previous step with the grey then this won't overpower it, it'll just um, complement it. So again, same um, way as before to apply it, and I'm trying to get the beetle in shot there, so I'm a very large model to get in shot with the setup I've got, but you can see just across this pincer here for green, we have some nice sort of green-blue effect going on now. So again, just continue to work your way around the model. So that green now dry, you can see we have some nice blue-green on the model and we're starting to see the iridescent effect take shape. Now I forgot to point out in this video that if you go for, if you want a pure iridescent then you'll also be using reds and yellows and oranges, um, but I'm not using that um, in this video, I just want blue-greens and purples. So as you see, can see there, um, I've got some ghost tint magenta and this is for our highlights on the purple areas. So, same as before, just come in lightly over the highlights that we've done on all the purple areas. I decided to hold them upside down for this stage, just to show off um, better on camera these highlights here. So all the undersides of the pincers, 
as well as the face, and then just a few random areas on the carapace. So again, just um, work your way around the model on all these areas that you wish to be magenta. So with that done, our iridescent effect is starting to really come to life now. So you can see, even though the model overall still looks quite dark when we hold them up to the light, we can start seeing all the blues, greens and purples, etc. You can see it's more subtle on the um, rear of the model, which is more what I'm sort of going for. So I'm coming back in with the flat coat before we do our next step. So again, um, if you've not used ghost tints before, it's worth um, leaving them to dry a good couple of hours before you put the varnish on. It is recommended to leave them um, overnight in fact, or 24 hours, but I feel you don't really need to. And I'm recording this in the middle of summer, so these paints dry very quickly anyway. So I've left, but I have left them a couple of hours between applying them and these varnishing stages. And then another couple of hours between varnishing and the next step. So now that that's dry, we can start coming back in again with coal. And again, we're going to be doing some subtle highlights. And um, this is going to be a turquoisey blue color. And again, um, we're just being very subtle for highlights. I'm going to focus on more of the tips and corners, sharp edges of the model with this highlight. And um, we're not going anywhere near any of the purple or magenta areas now. We're just applying these onto all the blue and green parts of the model. So again, it's just a case of working around the model, applying these subtle highlights. So with that highlight done, we can now come in with one of my favourite colours, and that's Ghost Tint Plasma Fluid. So anyone who's um, watched some of my painting tutorials before will know that I'm a great lover of this colour, and I've used it on a couple of our other tutorials. This is a lovely turquoisey colour, and that will make some of these highlights really pop. Now what I'm doing with this as well, is I'm just going to spray it all over these blue areas. Now it came out, you can see that it came out quite thin to begin with. So I'm going to do these very lightly. And it's mainly because I didn't shake the pot enough, I don't think. So always give these paints a good shake before you use them, just so they don't come out too runny, and make sure you're, you're flushed through your airbrush as well. If they come up too runny, um, you may need to apply more than one coat. Obviously, as I've used quite a dark grey here, this is not going to have the same intensity and sort of pop as it usually does. It's a very bright turquoise colour usually. You may add a further highlight if you really want it to, to really stand out, and you could use a lighter grey as the base for that. So, as always, um, work your way around the model, highlighting all the areas that you wish to be this colour. So that is the iridescent scheme complete. Now of course as I said earlier you could use some reds and oranges and yellows etc to have a full colour spectrum and really sell the iridescent look. But I just wanted to keep similar to the box art with the blues and purples and I added the green in there just to help sell the iridescent scheme a bit more and I just want to do something a bit different. So of course um, what you'd do now is give it another coat of varnish before you go on to paint all the other details. I do plan on adding some subtle edge highlights as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up, and also subscribe to our page if you haven't done so already. So all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching, and I'll see you again.